Hello and welcome to the Scatterworld channel and today we're going to be talking about the differences between B450 and B550 motherboards, especially if you're looking into picking up one of these for a future budget gaming PC. So AMD has released a brand new shiny chipset for the Ryzen series of processors, that being the B550 motherboard. And this one is essentially a B450 motherboard, but a little bit more souped up and preferably more geared for the upcoming Zen 3 or fourth gen Ryzen processors that could be coming out later this year. And at the moment, there is a price difference between both of these. And I bet a lot of you who clicked on this video who are obviously here for the title want to know, say if you're on a budget, like if you're building a $600 to $1,000 gaming PC, should you spend the extra for B550 or take the more conservative and more established route and go with B450 for lesser money. So I'll hopefully be answering those questions today by going into the specifications of these, deep diving into the value, and of course coming up with my personal recommendations on if you should go with B550 or B450. And for the actual topic of this video, I do wanna give a shout out to Gigabyte for actually sending over their brand new B550 Aorus Pro motherboard. So I'll be using this motherboard for future testing for any sort of upcoming Ryzen reviews, as well as any like motherboard comparisons since I just got in this motherboard recently. And also I wanna give a shout out to AMD for actually sending me a B550M mortar motherboard from MSI for upcoming build guides. So I'm a little excited for B550 and I think it's about time I made some content on it. But before I get into it, I wanna give a thank you to today's sponsor, SED Key, where you can find some inexpensive Windows 10 keys for your brand new or gaming PC that doesn't have an activated version of Windows 10. Using their website VIP SD key and then just quickly Googling like a Windows 10 Pro or Windows 10 Home key, you can get a key within a matter of seconds and even apply my discount code VIP scatter for a percentage off your order and get a really inexpensive Windows 10 key, put it on your PC, activate it, and finally get rid of that annoying watermark that's in the bottom right of your screen. So if you wanna check out VIP SED key for inexpensive Windows 10 keys, I'll have a link to them at the top of the description. Am I able to? All right, wait, wait. Maybe, <laughs> maybe, nope. Now nah, we ain't doing that, not today. So I'm gonna get started with this comparison by comparing the basic specifications of B550 motherboards and B450 motherboards, thanks to actually, of course, the new B550 AOS Pro, which I'd say is one of Gigabyte's higher end offerings for B550 motherboards and a really popular B450 motherboard from last year, or maybe 2018, the B450 AORUS M. And of course, not only just tell you guys the differences, but let you guys see them visually from the same brand. So first up, B550 is gonna have PCI Gen 4.0 support, specifically for the first PCI Express slot on this motherboard for say a PCI Gen 4.0 compatible graphics card, like any of the new Radeon RX graphics cards. And that also goes for its M.2 SSD slot that's I think is the top most as well. Both of those are PCI Gen 4.0 compatible, so you can take advantage of that extra bandwidth. And B450 is still on PCI Gen 3.0 for the most part. Now in terms of processor compatibility, B550 was basically designed for the future. So it's right now compatible with third gen Ryzen processors like the Ryzen 3100, 3300X, 3600, so on and so forth, and the upcoming fourth gen Zen 3 Ryzen processors. And it is not compatible with any first gen or second gen processors. So this right here is not gonna be compatible with the 1600 AF, 1200 AF, 2600, 2700X, 1200, 1200X, you get the point. Wait, the 1200X doesn't exist, my bad. But B450 actually can support up to fourth gen, but with a selective BIOS update. So yeah, this can support first gen, second gen, third gen, and again, fourth gen, but you have to request it through AMD if you buy one of their fourth gen Ryzen processors. And in my personal opinion, if you are planning to potentially use a fourth gen Ryzen processor on a B450 motherboard, I would actually not use it on something like this. I think the most optimal B450 motherboard for that would have to be one of MSI's Max series B450 motherboards, like the B450 Max Mordor, the B450 Max Tomahawk especially, or the Gaming Plus Max. Either of those I think would be a better option for any sort of fourth gen compatibility on a B450 board but technically you could 
use a fourth gen processor on B450 on top of first gen, second gen, and third gen. Now, one other thing is that B550 actually supports SLI and Crossfire, whereas B450 doesn't. So that is one interesting thing that B550 does have a leg up over B450. However, the majority of you watching this video are building a, probably a mid-range gaming PC and you aren't gonna be dealing with multi-GPU solutions, so keep that in mind. And of course, B550, since it is gonna be designed for future higher-end Ryzen processors, has better onboard VRM and cooling. So this will be able to support beefier processors down the road, like any upcoming near enthusiast grade Ryzen desktop processors that could be 12 cores or 16 cores. And throwing one of those onto like a little B450 board here with not as good of VRM and thermals will be interesting. And now the worst part of this video, pricing and availability, because Actually, both options are, are pretty gutted right now. B550 is pretty depleted in terms of stock, and B450 is pretty depleted in terms of stock. However, the one thing I can say for certain, as we've seen from B350 versus B450, B550 is gonna be continued being produced. They might cut off B450 production sometime in the near future. Like, I wouldn't be surprised if it's by like quarter one of 2021. So between the two, there's a better chance B550 is going to come back in stock because that is the premier mid-range chipset right now for Ryzen processors over B450. But in terms of pricing, B450 for the most part is cheaper than B550. Like I'd say the average price of a B450 motherboard right now on Newegg goes for about $90 to $100. And for B550, I've seen them go from anywhere from a modest price of $115 up to about $180, which is the price of this AORUS Pro motherboard right here. So a much greater range here, whereas for regular B450, if you exclude some of the high-end B450 options like the Tomahawk Max, should be around $90 to just over $100 if you can find them in stock. And that goes for both boards, actually. So I'd say on average, you're gonna save yourself about maybe 40 to $50 if you choose a B450 board over B550, which if you're gonna use that extra money for say a better processor, that can mean you could say go with like a Ryzen 3300X and a B550 board for about the same price as a Ryzen 3600X on a B450 board. Now that we've covered the specification differences and the pricing and availability of each of these motherboards, Let's then go into my final opinions on reasons why you should go with B550 for a mid-range or budget gaming PC or B450 for the same area. So first off, if you have any clear intentions of the future and you want to look into a fourth gen Ryzen processor, say if like you're starting off with a Ryzen 3100 or 3300X, but you want to get your hands on like the next Ryzen 4700X or maybe even 4800X or 4600X, I would definitely consider B550 since that motherboard is for surely going to have better VRMs and thermals with a higher end fourth gen processor than probably B450. And recently this has been somewhat simulated actually by a few reviewers online like Hardware Unboxed and Optimum Tech where they have taken 3900Xs and 3950Xs on B450 motherboards and compared them to B450 options and found that even like a top of the line B450 Max Tomahawk actually struggles more handling a 3900X than a mid-ranged B550M mortar motherboard. So I think it should be pretty clear that if you're looking for like the most future-proof option between the two, go B550. However, if you have no intentions of upgrading and you just want to stick to like a solid third gen or second gen processor, which Let's be real, you could probably still get away with. Like you can get a six core second gen processor and be good with that for at least like four years, like the 1600 AF or 2600. You'll still be fine with the B450 option. So really say if you're planning to use like a Ryzen 3600 on one of these two boards and you don't plan to overclock it, you're not really gonna notice that much of a difference in a realistic setting when you have it inside of a PC case with fans blowing through and across the motherboard. So. If you don't plan to overclock, don't stress out about the two options. I would ultimately choose whichever one is in stock and is for a reasonable price. But if you want to be the smart buyer, you're going to want to go with the newer one as usual. But really, I don't see that many drawbacks with going with B450 just on a processor scale. 
However, if you wanna take advantage of PCI Gen 4.0, say if you're looking for like a PCI Gen 4.0 compatible M.2 SSD and you wanna experience those ludicrous read and write speeds, then B550 is the way to go, even if only one of its M.2 slots truly supports PCI Gen 4.0, because again, I don't think realistically the majority of you watching this video are gonna run like four M.2 PCI Gen 4.0 SSDs at once and do like a crazy RAID 0 setup or RAID 10 setup. But hey, say like you're on a hard drive from your old gaming PC or an SSD from an old gaming PC and you wanna eventually upgrade, like I said, to a PCI Gen 4.0 SSD and experience like a leap in terms of quickness and overall read and write speeds, B550 again is the way to go. But if you don't care about any of that and you're like, why would I spend $200 on a PCI Gen 4.0 SSD that gets me one terabyte of storage when I can get the exact same storage for PCI Gen 3.0 for half the price, then B450 is there because it still offers M.2 slots that are PCI Gen 3.0, I think. So yeah. So hopefully that was enough of a comparison between B550 and B450 to hopefully provide some clarity to you guys who may be thinking that this decision is a lot harder than what it actually is, which it really isn't. It just comes down to a matter if you wanna be more prepared for the future or if you're fine with what you have right now and there's no like ambitions or pressures to possibly upgrade, which realistically on a mid-range budget gaming PC scale, if all you're playing are just basic battle royale, FPS or whatever PC games and you aren't an enthusiast grade or heavy desktop user that may be like going beyond just regular gaming, it's not that much of a huge difference. Because right now I know there are some users out there who are still on first gen Ryzen processors on their B350 motherboards and they're still very satisfied with what they have and I don't think they have any plans to upgrade right now but maybe like next year they will. So that would have been like four years between upgrades and that's on that sort of hardware from 2017. And right now we're dealing with 2020 so the necessity to upgrade like within a year may not be as strong as you think. Anyways, that is it for my video today. And do know I will be producing some B550 content soon on the channel, like with this motherboard, which will be used for future testing for any sort of processor or motherboard review videos. And again, I have the extra B550M mortar motherboard, which I'm totally gonna throw in a future build guide and have that ready for you. So if you wanna check out that upcoming content, I would subscribe to the Scatterbolt channel. That being this one. But let's say somehow you don't want to subscribe, which I mean, sure, you can be one of those people. I've still got five other flavors of social media you can interact with. One of those being a Twitch, a TikTok, which trust me, it isn't cringe, an Instagram, a Twitter, and a Discord. So I have like five different ways to interact with the community if you want to get into that. And I have all of that in the description below. And with that, that is the end of this video. Thank you so much for watching. And this is the Scatable Channel signing out.